Hi folks, welcome to our live Facebook demo here tonight, coming to you live from Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, here at Steve Weiss Music. We are demoing tonight for you a wonderful new product from Pearl, it's the Pearl Mallet Station. Uh, I can't tell you the last time I remember so much buzz about a brand new instrument like this coming out for the percussion world or for any kind of uh, musical instrument at all. Uh, there's just so much buzz about it because of the incredible capabilities of this instrument. So tonight, we're going to give you an opportunity to not, over, you know, not only get an overview of the entire instrument, but for you to ask questions about it as well. So what we're going to do is, first of all, again, thank you for joining us here. We're so glad that you came. Uh, we're going to have an expert in here with us in just a moment so that we can get the details about this instrument. Uh, what we'll do is, as soon as I pass it to our guest uh, from Pearl Adams, uh, you guys can feel free to ask any questions that you have there in the comments section on Facebook. I will do my best to record those questions while the demo is happening. Uh, we'll let uh, our guests get through the demo before I cover your questions and hopefully get to the, as many of them as we can so that we can get you real comfortable with uh, Pearl Mallet Station. Again, this Pearl Mallet Station is, of course, available on our website, www.steveweissmusic.com for the low price of $9.99. And of course, it sounds like a sales pitch, the low, low price. But when you see what the capabilities of this instrument are, I think you're going to be surprised that you can get it for so little money. So joining us tonight as our uh, expert here from Nashville, Tennessee, is uh, Mr. Matt Jordan. Matt is the concert marketing manager for Pearl Adams. Uh, he's very well versed in concert instruments, obviously, but also in electronics. Matt also happens to be a standout world-class uh, designer. Uh, for several programs in the DCI and WGI world for those of you that do the marching side of things. So Matt is going to give us, again, an overview of this incredible instrument, this Pearl Mallet Station, and then go ahead and feel free to post your comments there on Facebook, and we'll get to as many as we can when we're done. Thanks again for tuning in. Matt, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Yeah, Cool. Absolutely. So this is our new... Yeah, this is our new EM1 mallet station. So we're really excited about this instrument. We're, we're getting very, very close to launch at this point. Um, so what this is, is it's a three octave USB powered MIDI mallet controller um, that's actually an adjustable range as well. Uh, so let me play a little bit and then we'll talk about some of the features of the instrument on that. So as you can see, just there's a lot of sensitivity in this instrument. Uh, what this really allows you to do is play musically. It allows you to play like you would an acoustic instrument. It allows you to phrase like you would on an acoustic instrument. Um, and so it just makes it super easy to jump into, no matter whether you're a beginner or a professional, you can really dive into this instrument and really truly understand what it is. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the key feature of this uh, mallet station is the adjustable range. So what you'll notice is I have these gap caps here. And so I actually have the ability to change the range of the instrument. Right now I'm set up as F to F, so you can have, I, I see the group of three here and then the group of two. What I can do is actually literally move these gap caps, and I'm gonna actually gonna raise this up to the camera so you can see. So we actually have these little silicone gap caps that allow you to really flexibly and easily move to any range of the instrument. So I'm gonna restage this now for being a C to C instrument just by moving these gap caps. And then over on my control section here, I actually have a low note selector. And what that low note selector allows me to do is actually change the range of my instrument using that selector. So now I'm set up as a C to C instrument, and I can actually now play that lowest three octaves of a five octave marimba. So that nice, big, full sound. I also have octave select buttons over on the control section. So if I wanted to have that in a different range of that, I totally could over here on the octave selection here. So you can actually set that to any diatonic low note. So if you wanted to have a low E there for a guitar transcription, you could do that. If you wanted to have it low A for a marimba solo, that, that's a low A marimba, four and a third marimba solo, you could do that. So it really allows you to have four octaves worth of flexibility in a three octave footprint, which makes it really great for travel, really great for having in your dorm room, and just a really, that, that portability is really helpful for that. 
So let me switch back to F and we'll talk about some of the features that are specific to Vibraphone. So again, moving these gap caps is just super easy. So this is actually the final design. So it's, it actually holds on a little bit. There's a slight little bit of kind of latching on on those gap caps. So it holds on even if you turn the instrument upside down and shake it, they stay on nice and firm, but they're also super, e super easy to remove. So on our vibraphone, we have the ability to do a, a various number of things. So this is going to have dampening mode. And so that means that if I play a note with the pedal held down, I can simply put my mallet back on the key and that's gonna actually dampen the note for me just like I would in an acoustic instrument. I can also do things like dead stroke. So let me play a little excerpt and you can see kind of what I'm talking about with that. So I can leave a single note ringing with that. So I play a chord. I can dampen just those notes, which is really, really helpful for that. I can also let notes ring and do dead strokes. I also have four assignable buttons over here on the control section. I have four assignable buttons and then three assignable faders, so two vertical and one horizontal. And what that allows me to do is use my software. In this case, I'm using Apple's main stage, which we'll talk about later. Um, but I can actually assign one of those buttons to actually control my motor being turned on. And then one of the faders be used for the speed of the vibrato. So I have a regular note here. And then if I press the button, I can get that vibrato. I can then use this fader to change the speed of the vibrato on that side of things. So lots of flexibility for the vibraphonist who doesn't want to necessarily take a full-size instrument to a gig. You can take just mallet station, assign all the different effects, and then also play some non-traditional sounds as well. You're not limited to just vibraphone. You could play electric piano, you could play synthesizer sounds. It really opens up the jazz vibraphonist's kind of arsenal to a wider variety of instruments. So one of the other things that our artists especially need um, on, on Broadway is the ability to play things like timpani in the bottom, chimes on top, and then some percussion ca sounds kind of sprinkled throughout, like concert bass drum, gong, uh, bell tree, wood block. And what we've actually been able to do is we can actually split the instrument, both in the software editor, so you can actually do things like MIDI channel one on the bottom, MIDI channel two on top, and then actually we can re-enable our gap caps over here. So these gap caps you can actually set up on a different MIDI channel to actually send uh, separate note numbers. So I, those are actually assignable per gap cap as well. So in this particular patch, I've set it up with timpani, chimes, and then percussion sounds on the gap caps here. So let me give that as a little example. So you can see that I have the ability to have really any sound I want on the instrument. And I can do that both with you know, a, a software like MainStage or with Sample Tank, or I can do that actually with external instruments as well through our MIDI expander, which I'll talk about later. Um, and so uh, being able to assign those gap caps separately really makes it flexible to, to get to whatever note number you need on those gap caps on, on that side of things. So I also have the ability, we have three assignable pedal inputs. So in this instance, I have one set up to sustain, one set up as a switch pedal or kind of a, a, a variance pedal uh, so I can do whatever uh, I want to with it in main stage. And then I also have an expression pedal set up. So in this particular instance, I've actually set up the expression pedal to be just like a timpani pedal. So I can get those different glissandi effect if I'm, again, playing in a Broadway pit and I need that ability to, to have that effect, even though I don't have real timpani um, in front of me there. So we also have the ability to have things like glockenspiel, xylophone, your kind of standard instruments. So here's just a few little sound examples um, that I have set up through main stage.
So a really pleasant glockenspiel sound. Um, and one of the things I wanted to mention is actually that every all the sounds I'm using in this particular template are actually sounds that we will have available for download on our website once the mount station is released. Um, so it's actually a main stage template for those of you who are main stage users. All of the marimba sounds, vibraphone sounds, electronic sounds are all going to be contained within the template. Um, and so they're all built-in sounds that will allow you to sound great um, on, on that as well. So, so it's it really out of the box going to be set up where you can literally take it out of the box, plug it into main stage, open the file, and be sounding exactly like, like I'm doing right now. So even things like a xylophone, you hear the quality of the xylophone sound um, that we can have, and then just the articulation you get and the, the, the quickness of the articulation off of the instrument. So just the response to that. I mean, I can play as fast as I need to. I can play things like rolls, even on xylophone. And not have that kind of machine gun effect that you can have on, on some certain instruments. So also things like crotales, to be able to have kind of your full orchestral assortment as we've gone through so far. So again, for that kind of Broadway use or that front ensemble use, if, you, if your school doesn't own crotales, that's a perfect example of the ability to kind of have that color still and that timbre um, just on the mallet station. One of the other great things about the mount station is the ability to play with sticks. Uh, when we designed the instrument, we really wanted the ability to play with any implement you need. So if you're coming off of playing timpani, you can play with timpani mallets. If you're coming off of marimba or vibraphone, you can use those mallets. If you're coming off of playing drum set, you can play with snare sticks. There's really flexibility uh, with what you actually play with the instrument with. So you can get all those world percussion sounds. It actually handles those little quick root rudimental passages, like things like tabla. So it really allows you to kind of play whatever instrument you need and actually play an idiomatic type of sound with that. Um, so the durometer, the, the silicone rubber that we have on these bars, really allows being able to play with marimba mallets or snare drum sticks. And it actually feels good with both of those. There's a rebound just enough on both of those that makes it really feel nice to play on. One of the other things that we're excited about for students especially, but also professionals to get their hands on, is the ability to play with different sounds, to not just play the acoustic percussion sound, you know, kind of sampled instruments that I've played so far. So being able to play things like electronic instruments, and um, we already have a few artists that are involved, people like Nick Worth, who are really truly taking that sampling um, and really doing, taking it to the next level. So this is just a, a good example of like an 80s style synth that you could use uh, to get some different sounds. So one of the things I've done is actually assign my, my expression pedal here to be a filter cutoff. So if I play a single note, you can hear that filter cutoff happening throughout there. I also have things like uh, on the faders I've assigned things like attack, for example, also the delay speed. So I can change the sound dramatically just by affecting that attack. So really dramatically change uh, the sounds I'm getting out of that. Additionally, one of the, the fun things to do on this is to play monophonic lead lines. You can really kind of get that almost vocal-like, uh, singing-like quality out of this when you, when you approach the vocals, um, approach it from the perspective of vocals. Yeah, so some, some really interesting things that you can do uh, there with the instrument on, on that. So let me move to a different patch, and we'll get some kind of different effects on there as well. So like electric piano, you can kind of get that nice little um, kind of uh, pop sound a little bit. And again, dampening does work on here as well. So 
So there's other sounds as well you can you know experiment with, things like upright bass, uh, things like piano, harp, guitar, um, but just really, really lots of flexibility to do with, with whatever instrument you need. If you're in a percussion ensemble and you don't have a bass guitar player, you can assign a bass guitar sound here to this instrument. Um, if you don't own a five octave marimba and you need that low end for a bass marimba part, you can put it on there. So just being able to assign anything you need to that is just really, really flexible. Um, well, I, I mentioned earlier that you can do things like assigning notes to get the gap caps. Um, we actually do that through our software editor, uh, which is actually the first time we're actually showing that off. So let me kind of transition that for a, for a second here. And so one of the cool things that we're, we're talking about with this is that this is actually a online browser editor version of this. Uh, so it actually uses Web MIDI. Um, so you use it through Google Chrome um, or Opera, so any Web, Web MIDI enabled browser. And what this allows you to do is very graphically edit your instrument. So for example here, I'm, I'm on zone A with everything I've been doing so far. So I'm sending, if I look at zone A down here, I'm sending on channel one. So that's what main stage is receiving. But I can literally change my zone just by dragging this down. And so now you'll notice I'm splitting the instrument where I have A zone on the bottom of the instrument and then B zone at the top of the instrument. So that what that allows me to do is if I'm sending you an external instrument, I can send maybe timpani on channel one chimes on channel two, and then I also have my gap cap controls here on channel nine here. So if I hit enable all, you can see that if I click on a gap cap, it's actually sending a MIDI signal now to channel nine. So some really interesting things. I'll get it more into the editor as we go forward. Just wanted to show um, everyone that. And you can assign all the buttons and faders just by clicking on them. You can assign the faders by clicking on them, and same with the pedals. So really simple. You also do all your firmware updating in the unit as well uh, from here. So you, you can go to one website, and it actually does load offline. So once you've gone to the website once, um, it will be cached on your computer. So even if you are not connected to Wi-Fi, um, you can actually still access the editor uh, from that side of things. So that's a good overview of the mount station itself. We also have some accessories available. Um, we have our two bags available. So there's a soft bag that's going to be around uh, $100 street price and then a, a semi-hard bag here for about $200 um, that's going to be perfect for that gigging instrument kind of player. Um, and that's going to have room for your stands. That's going to have room for your kind of pedals and audio interface and all those different type of things on that. Uh, we also have our PEMM module mounts. And so what that is, is that's the module mount that goes on the bottom that allows me to mount it on tripod stands like I'm doing here. And then uh, kind of down the road, we will be offering as well this Keith McMillan MIDI expander. So if you do need five pin MIDI, this allows you to kind of pull that five pin MIDI out of the, the device and be able to send to a separate uh, unit on that. It does mirror the USB MIDI. So you can actually have a redundant backup. You can have your computer running off of USB. And then you can also have your MIDI expander running that into a software, uh, or a, sorry, a hardware MIDI device of your choice. Um, the other thing that we didn't mention a ton at the beginning is that this actually runs on any really USB device. So if you have iPhone, iPad, Mac, or PC, and also Android as well with the appropriate adapters, you can actually run that bus powered as well. So no power adapters. Really, it just kind of works. And that's what's really, really cool about the instrument. You can be in the middle of a football field. You can have an iPad. You can plug into the device and then go from there. So that's the overview of the mount station. I know Jeff has some questions as well um, that will kind of help clarify some of the other things about the unit. So thanks so much, Matt. A couple of questions that I have from the folks that are watching in is that um, it, just to be clear, the software that's needed to run, it works Mac, Windows, iPad, iPhone, like you said. Um, what are the options for that? I understand that you have the, the software editor and the sound library that comes with it. You mentioned main stage. Could you just give us a little bit more detail on that? Absolutely. Yeah, so what I'm using here is main stage. So main stage is a $30 program through Apple that is Mac only. Um, that's kind of the industry standard for a lot of the higher end things like DCI, WGI, um, as well as Broadway pits um, and those type of things. Uh, we will be including um, a, a piece of software called Sample Tank. Um, and, and actually, it's a free version of the software, and we'll be including a download code for the libraries for that uh, for a chromatic percussion pack on iOS and then kind of a mallet station pack on Mac PC. Um, those are still kind of in progress. Those will be um, kind of um, you know, be, being worked on until the release date. Um, but I can show you the, the, the sample tank software briefly. And so sample tank here 
what this is, is it's very similar to MainStage and that allows you to assign things to different patches. Uh, so you can have different parts playing different instruments, for example, have a grand piano assigned here, uh, but you'll have all of your chromatic percussion instruments uh, that can be loaded in through there. Um, and the sample tank is available for Mac, PC, iPhone, and iPad. So that will be what the, the library that will be coming with it. The software editor, as I mentioned, is just a website. And so that actually will not be a download. We'll just give you the link to that website. Um, we will have a download version available farther down the road. Um, but as of right now, it is going to be the web editor uh, at release. Great, thank you. What about the mallets that you're using, Matt? Do you have a recommended mallet? Um, and I also wanted to say, while I'm asking that question, for those of you that are uh, watching, uh, we do have a slight little bit of a delay, and I don't want you to worry about that. It's not the instrument itself. It's just the limitations or the nature of the live stream that we're doing. So if you see Matt actually hit the instrument and hear the sound slightly late, it's not the instrument at all. But Matt, while you're playing there, you happen to be playing with a yarn mallet. Uh, is that the recommended thing? And if you could talk a little bit about how does it feel compared to a natural instrument? Absolutely. Um, so in this case, I, I'm just using some of my kind of favorite regular Merma mallets. These are just by chance innovative uh, Mark Ford 803s. Um, but but really any marimba mallet works. I'd say marimba mallets are typically my go-to or vibraphone mallets um, because it limits the contact noise. You know, when you have something like a xylophone mallet or a snare drum stick, um, you obviously don't have the yarn to temper it just like you wouldn't on a real acoustic instrument as well. Um, so if you're trying to eliminate that contact sound, um, if you're playing in a, in a Broadway pit or something like that, um, you can play it with anything, but obviously depending on what you're playing with will change the amount of contact noise you're hearing from the bar just no matter what material that is. Um, but again, any implement does work, snare drum sticks, um, marimba mallets, xylophone mallets, timpani mallets, uh, you name it. Um, in terms of the feel, it does feel very close to an acoustic instrument. Um, all of our artists that have had a chance to play Mallet Station, the first thing they do when they come up and play it and hit it a few times is go like, oh man, that feels so much better than it looks like you know, it could. I mean, you know, to be that soft silicone rubber and to have the response that it does, it's pretty impressive. Um, and also the fact that it feels good with both sticks and mallets, I mean, really, it's easy to go back and forth between both because um, you eliminate the, the really, really soft kind of foamy feeling um, from some other instruments and also the hard wooden feeling from other instruments on the other side of the spectrum, kind of that, that perfect uh, uh, marriage in the middle of finding the just hard enough and just soft enough to make it feel good uh, when you're coming from an acoustic instrument or more importantly for students um, when they're playing Mallet Station to go to an acoustic instrument because we want it to kind of go, bo go, go both ways on that side of things. Okay. Matt, is it possible for you to, uh, to play some of the sample tank with it, or does that take a bit of setup for us to make that happen? Yeah, but uh, one of the reasons that we can't do that right now is actually my microphone is actually going through main stage. Um, so we don't have the ability to switch to any other software uh, as a result of that right now. But um, very, very soon we will have the ability uh, to have videos on our website that do talk you through all the different sounds available in sample tank, all the different templates in main stage, um, so really, we're going to give you the full picture um, on videos here re relatively shortly. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it capable and sensitive enough, each one of the pads, to recognize a buzz roller or more dense pattern like that? I mean, dense patterns, yes. Um, one of the things that um, really a lot of electronic instruments can't do is that once you've actually hit a note, uh, hitting another one is actually, it's still in the process when you're sensing all the pressure of actually it's still in that previous note. So buzz rolls and things like that, if you have an open enough buzz roll, it can work, but closed buzz rolls typically are going to kind of have some cancellations as a result of uh, all the information that the mallet station is still getting from the previous stroke. Great, okay, that makes sense. Now, how about the durability? Can you talk a little bit about the unit itself in terms of inside and or outdoor use? And then also uh, about the silicone bars themselves. Somebody had asked the question, uh, are they replaceable if they get damaged and how that might work? Absolutely. Um, so durability wise, I, I mean, uh, as Jeff mentioned earlier, I mean, personally, I'm involved very heavily with the DCI uh, front ensemble side of things, the WGI front, front ensemble side of things. So this instrument was really designed from the ground up to be able to handle that outdoor environment. Um, the silicone bar material, it's the same silicone that you have in like the fancy silicone oven mitts. Um, so it's really designed to handle that heat. I mean, you know, five, 600 degrees uh, for the bars, obviously not the rest of the instrument. Um, it should be, should be no problem. Um, but really the whole rest of the instrument, it's a very simple design. Um, as a result of not having to have a separate power supply, really heat is not an issue for the instrument. It's a very low power draw. I mean, we can really have up to, I, I believe it's 100 milliamps worth of power, which is very, very low. Um, that's, you know, a tenth of what you get from a normal USB jack. 
Um, so it's really, really low power, which means heat is lower as well. Um, so that's very simple with the, the, the idea of the, the motherboard and then the, the smart fabric sensor technology that we're using in the silicone bar. It can really handle all of that, no problem. Uh, in terms of replacement of the bars, um, that will be something that uh, we will be offering service on. It won't be a necessarily reusable replaceable part, um, but that's something that we're still kind of working out uh, with that side of things. It is actually really easy to work on the unit. We've, we've already taken a few of them apart just for, um, for different, different reasons to check on things. Um, and, and overall, it's super easy to work on. It's just a matter of whether those parts will be available to consumers or not directly. Great, okay. Um, can you speak a little bit about the, the laptop or the iPad or iPhone version that might be needed to run it? If somebody has an older Mac or an older PC or something like that, I assume that there's a, a certain requirement that's going to come with the unit, but how can they find that out and how does it work on something that may not be the most current operating system? Absolutely. Well, the, the important thing of this is that it is a class compliant MIDI device. So there's not necessarily a computer requirement as long as that computer supports class compliant MIDI devices. Um, what we have noticed though, and this is, you know, no matter what instrument you're using, um, is that uh, a mallet controller like this, or really any percussion controller, um, you're going to be dealing with latency. And one of the ways that you deal with that is by having a more powerful computer so you can actually reduce that buffer size. Um, so what a buffer size is, is the amount of time that the computer has to process between your hit and the sound it produces. And that's actually adjustable in most audio software. Um, so in this instance, I'm, I'm using about a 64 um, buffer size on this, uh, but I would say anything under 128 is going to be um, totally acceptable in terms of the speed from when you hit to when you hear the sound. So it really just depends on if your computer can handle that low of a buffer size on whether that's gonna work. And that also depends on the level of software you're running. If you're running more uh, heavy duty software like Native Instruments contact libraries uh, or Omnisphere, that's going to be more taxing on your computer than something simple like the main stage library we're going to, um, you know, the, the template we're gonna include or the sample tank sounds that we're gonna include. So it really is just a, there's a large variety of possibilities. Um, I'll talk about Windows really fast. Um, one of the things that, that it's, it's good to be aware of is that with Windows, uh, we do have um, a, a difference in audio support uh, on a operating system level. So typically with Windows, um, the, the, the differences between manufacturers in terms of audio drivers are going to be pretty large. So certain computers might have very low latency issues um, and some computers might have a little bit bigger latency issues. Um, what we typically recommend is using an audio interface of some sort. Um, really any audio interface will work. Um, in this case, I'm using a, a Zoom uh, audio interface, um, but really any interface will work to help reduce that latency because that takes the drivers away from the computer and puts it in a, a device on its own, um, which does help reduce latency as well. Great, thank you. Um, we've had a couple of folks ask about transposing and what the capabilities are uh, in that area. Absolutely. Um, so there's two different types of transposing. Um, so if, if we can see the kind of overhead, overhead shot, Chris, this will help. Um, so one of the things that we're doing, again, I, I kind of did it F to C earlier, but these cap caps are all just there. So if you'll notice, if I take them all away, they're really totally open. And so the important thing is to not think about this as a, t a transposition, because that's not what this is. What this is is a range shift. And so I, no matter what I want to set up, let's say I want to set up low E, I just move this low note selector over here, set that up at low E, and then what I'm going to do is kind of figure out, so if E is my lowest note, then I want to have this be my F, so a group of three, a group of two, a group of three, a group of two, and a group of three. So there we go. So I've set up my instrument to be E to E, no problem. So I can handle that low guitar range repertoire uh, without issue. Uh, I also have an octave up and down button over here on the control panel. And so what that allows me to do is actually go two octaves up. So it go, turns green for one octave, red for two octaves, and that happens in the other direction as well. So there's no true transposition on the unit, you're not going to be able to, you know, transpose to a different key. Uh, but what you are going to do is be able to fit your specific exercise or etude or solo into that because you're going to actually just shifting the range diatonically. Great. And I know there's a lot of folks that use um, products like Ableton or GarageBand. Can you speak a little bit as to how that kind of dovetails with the uh, mallet station? 
Absolutely. Um, well, as I mentioned, it is a class compliant MIDI device. And so really any software that, that takes that will work. We've used it with Ableton just fine. Uh, and we actually are, we have a few artists that are, that are pretty heavy Ableton users um, that are going on, uh, are planning on making some templates that we're going to post as well um, for, for the unit. GarageBand, same deal, no problem, works fine. Uh, same with GarageBand for iOS. So iPhone, iPad, and Mac, GarageBand works no problem. Uh, even on the PC side, things like Fruity Loops, uh, programs like a Persona Studio One, uh, Pro Tools, anything that supports MIDI works with Mallet Station, absolutely no problem, because there's no drivers required to be installed. Even the software editor is just an optional side of things that if you want to edit the, the the settings on the unit, you can, but you're not required to. You can plug in and play, no drivers, no anything. Great, and I know you covered this a little bit earlier, but maybe just a little more detail because we've had a couple more questions about how many different zones or regions or MIDI channels can you assign on the keyboard? I think you said earlier that it's pretty much any key. Uh, so some folks were wondering about that. And then also, could you program or, or assign something like a full chord to a single note? Absolutely. Um, yeah, let me let me switch over to the software, and then I'll kind of show you some of those things with our software editor. Um, so we, we have on the unit the ability to do three separate MIDI channels of notes. And so what that's going to be is we have on here, right now, zone A is set up to be up to here, and that is on MIDI channel 1. Zone B, it starts here on the A, and that's going to be MIDI channel 2. On the gap caps, I can set up a third MIDI channel, and that is uh, a MIDI channel for all six gap caps. And also, the other thing to clarify, the way that we've set this up is that the lowest gap cap is always called gap, tap, gap cap number one all the way through gap cap number six. So it doesn't matter if you change the range and the location of the gap caps change, it's always left to right one through six. Um, so in terms of notes that you can send on the keyboard, uh, it's going to be three separate MIDI channels. Um, again, zone A being one channel, zone B being another channel, and then the gap caps being a third channel. Um, I also have the ability, if you're sending things, uh, like you could send certain notes on the buttons themselves, and you can actually, on a per button basis, change the channel as well. Um, so you could change, you know, on this instance, I'm using um, the buttons to be a note 64, 65, 66, and 67 on channel 10. And so that's allowing me to assign those in main stage to be able to, to be things like patch switch and turning on my motor and all of that. But again, if you're using external instruments, you have the ability to do things like send a program change. So I can actually just, just simply click on that, change the program change. If I have a, a, a MIDI controller or sorry, a MIDI device that requires uh, MSB or LSB bank select numbers, I can very easily just click on that and change those and also a CC number. So this will send all of those different commands on a press of that button. I also have the ability to select preset select mode. What that means is I actually have four presets on the unit itself. So actually during my main stage demonstration, for example, I was using these. So I have four different presets. I have one for dampening with F to F, so the, the gap caps are not enabled. I have one for dampening F to F with the gap caps enabled. I have one for aftertouch on F to F. And then I also have one for using external sustain F to F with, with the gap caps enabled. Um, the external sustain is helpful if you are doing things that want to see, like certain libraries want to see a sustain pedal uh, message. So you can set that up to use that. Um, but you can also save your own user profiles as well. So you can actually save an unlimited number of those. Um, so for example, if I recall this split at A flat, you'll see that I have that where it recalls that. And that's already been sent to the unit. And so if I press buttons on the unit, you'll notice it'll Sorry, I just muted myself using one of those buttons. So if I if I press those different buttons on there, I can actually uh, recall those different presets if preset preset select mode is checked there. So does that answer your question, Jeff? On that, I think so. Yeah, we've got quite a few coming in from Facebook too. Um, one of that Great. has come up a couple of times was uh, about a breath controller for instruments uh, like virtual instruments and things like that. Absolutely. We do not have support for breath controllers, but uh, there are really plenty of USB um, device interfaces that allow you to have a breath controller input. And again, you would just at that point send it into your DAW as a separate controller. Um, no problem. So, so we, didn't, we didn't feel like uh, it was worth affecting the price point of the instrument to add a breath controller um, at this point. Greg, can you preset the map and assign the map to the button to handle, you know, say, patch changes in the middle of a performance? 
Absolutely. Um, so to be clear, again, there's there's four presets on the unit stored internally. Um, there's an unlimited number if you're using the editor. So if you wanted to have a pretty aggressive list of different presets for the unit, you could actually have the editor open and switch between those that way. Um, but the four presets are going to allow you to set things like your note gate time. Um, so the ability to have the um, the length of a MIDI note uh, on that on that end. Uh, the, also, the ability to switch between your dampening and your aftertouch, uh, your dampening thresholds. Um, one of the things we, I didn't show in the software, actually, if we switch back over to that, um, even things like your velocity curves. So I can literally actually, with this velocity curve, just draw in those different curves and get those different things there. So really, really flexible with that. I can actually save four user curves as well um, on, on that end. Great. So now a little bit just about the basic hardware setup. You showed the uh, the mount that goes on the bottom. That basically can work with any kind of, you said, tripod stand. So any kind of a basic cymbal stand base or something like that, it kind of can hook into. Or if you wanted to mount this above uh, an existing acoustic instrument, it would work in that way uh, as well? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, the module mounts really just give it like a little nub on the bottom, or actually two nubs, you know, one on each side, that allow you to mount it. Uh, it's, I think, a 7 eighths inch uh, post there, and that allows you to mount it with uh, UX80s, which is our, our version that allows you to come off like the front of a vibraphone and mount it on the front there. Um, we as actually have an electronic stand model, the ES. 1080S, I believe, is the model. Um, and so you would need two of those. And that's what I'm actually using here. So it's actually mounted on two tripods with those uh, UX80 tops. Um, there, there's a bunch of different options. You can just put it on a standard X stand if you don't want to have the module mounts. Uh, you want it just to be nice and sleek and to be able to have that. Uh, the one benefit to the stands versus the X stand is that you can fit it in the gig bag that we have available over here. Um, and that makes it much easier to be portable than an X stand that's, that's big and bulky. Um, and also, this allows you to tilt as well. So if you want to have some tilt, um, you know, you want to tilt it towards the audience to get, a, to get more of an effect. Or if you're on a field frame instrument and you want it tilted away from you, uh, that those module mounts really help do that on that end. Great. So suppose you want to use uh, additional mount stations, two or three or multiple ones in a setup. Is that going to require an individual laptop for each one, an individual iPad for each one? Can you just tell us how you would uh, have multiple mount stations in one setting? Absolutely. Um, it really depends on, again, like I talked about with latency earlier, it really depends on the uh, type of demands you're placing on the unit. Um, and really not mallet station, but more your computer. Um, and so uh, you can run really up to 16 units, because what you would do is you would set each unit to have a different MIDI channel. And that way in your program, whatever that is, be it Logic, Main Stage, you know, Studio One, Pro Tools, uh, et cetera. Uh, you could actually have each mount station show up as a different MIDI channel and have your sounds assigned on a per channel basis uh, to that. So totally possible to have up to 16 uh, per computer, but you're going to run into latency issues if you're running uh, that many more than likely. Uh, typically with a program like Mainstage or again, the aforementioned programs, uh, I would recommend running no more than two or three off of one computer, uh, only, only because it starts to become difficult to manage that many devices uh, on one computer. Not that it's not capable from the mallet station end uh, for that. Okay, and then how about power options for these um, with the lightning to USB camera connection kit, which I believe is, is kind of the uh, the thing that will work best for you. Can you use AC power yeah. when using a phone or a tablet? Can you just explain a little bit about how the device is powered? Absolutely. Um, well, what I mentioned earlier with bus power, what that means is it's actually powered off the device itself. Um, so there's not actually a need to power the device in any different way. Um, if you're plugged into a Mac or a PC, it's going to power off of your USB port. If you're plugged into an iPhone, iPad over this camera connection kit, it's still powering the unit. Uh, on this camera connection kit, actually, uh, Chris, if you could switch to the above camera, I, I think. And actually, we'll go over to this side one here. Um, so what you can actually see is that if, let me see. Uh, I guess we're having some. Let me pull it back a little bit. There we go. So I have a USB port here on one side. Oops, sorry, I pointed to the wrong one. USB port on this side, and then a lightning port in on this side. So what you're doing that's important is you're not actually powering mallet station off this. You're just charging your device. So you can run it. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can have your iPhone or iPad in the middle of a football field, plug this in, and that's all you need. You don't actually need to power your device in order to have enough. Um, well, actually, at WGI, we, we did an experiment just for fun of seeing how long um, a, a mallet station would be powered off of an iPad. 
uh, without being plugged up at all. And I think it was something like eight hours. So, I mean, we're not talking about, you know, a lot of power draw. You really could run it all day um, with normal usage. And I think that was even full brightness on the screen as well. So it can really handle uh, quite a bit um, on most devices of being able to run Mallet Station without power. Uh, honestly, for, for most uses that I'm going to be using it for with, with Mystique, uh, with Spirit, we're actually not even going to be plugging the computer up um, when you're rolling on a, the field for a performance because there's so much battery power uh, to power that's not really an issue. Okay, and, and kind of go back just a minute or just a second here. If you do have multiple units on a computer, uh, is the browser software going to be able to manipulate the settings on each individually? Um, it, will, it won't be able to if they're both connected at the same time. Uh, what we would recommend doing if you're wanting to use multiple units is just simply connect one device at a time and edit one device at a time. Um, and then, again, because those four presets will be saved on the unit itself, so you'll still have four presets per mallet station to be able to handle that. I mean, personally, I, I'm only really using two of the presets ever, um, even with some of the complex stuff I'm doing. Um, so you really shouldn't have any issues needing more presets than that. Um, or be able to really edit the devices on the fly with all of them connected. That's not really, I, I'd say, um, something that's necessary because that's going to be more your detail work that you can do just on an individual unit-by-unit unit basis. Okay, and you briefly mentioned the Macmillan uh, instrument, the, the MIDI expander. Is that available now? Uh, it, it, is it is available now. This is not a new box. Uh, Keith McMillan has been selling this for a while. Um, a as of right now, uh, we are still getting them, so, so we're not selling them directly quite yet, uh, but that will be coming uh, down the pike very shortly. So. so, yeah, that's the MIDI expander. So it just is USB. So you actually plug, and actually, can we go to that side camera again? I'll do the same thing. So what this is, it's, it's actually, oh, there we go. So what it is, it's, it's, it's a box that has a MIDI in and a MIDI out port. And then a power port. And so this is the one time if you're using a MIDI expander with the unit and not plugging it into a computer, uh, this, the MIDI expander does come with a small power adapter um, on that. And then also you plug the unit into this expand port over here. So one into power, one into the expand port, and then you have your MIDI, your hardware five pin MIDI out on that. You can actually do MIDI into the device. Typically, you're not going to need to do much with that. Um, the, the instances for that would be if you want to trigger one of the, the presets on the unit, you can actually do that with a program change. Um, and then you can also actually control the LEDs remotely as well. Those are the two real things that you can do uh, with the external MIDI uh, coming back into Mallet Station. Great. OK, just a couple more questions while we wrap up here. Uh, could you just give a really basic brief overview of what comes in the box and in terms of the hardware itself, but also sound library and whatever, uh, what, what are they going to get when they open the box and be able to do right as they open it? Absolutely. Um, so what's included in the box? It's a it's the mount station itself. Um, we'll include six gap caps with that. So that'll be your six gap caps. It has a three meter USB cable. So it's really everything you need to get started. Um, the the, also, the, the downloads that you'll have available, you'll have the download for IK Multimedia Sample Tank, which will have a serial number for download for both the Chromatic Percussion Pack uh, for iOS, and then also a Mallet Station Pack for Mac PC. Again, we're still working out the exact details of that, but in the box is really a, re uh, a link to register, and then on ProMalletStation.com, um, which right now just redirects to our, to our Mallet Station page, um, but we'll have a registration link here shortly. Um, that will allow you to get the serial numbers, and then also give you the link for the uh, software editor, or really the web-based editor on that side of things. Great, and I think the uh, most important question for last that a lot of people are wondering is, when can I get it? What's the availability like? I think everybody knows with a brand new product like this, it's hard to determine uh, you know, what the popularity is going to be. And like I said at the opening of this, I, I can't remember something that was more anticipated than a product like this uh, in a really long time. So what do you anticipate to be delivery dates for folks that are looking to get their hands on a mallet station? Absolutely. Well, we actually just heard from the factory uh, here in, uh, a few days ago, so everything's going swimmingly over there. Uh, they're actually packing the first units now to be shipped. Um, so we should be seeing delivery here in a, a matter of you know 30 to 45 days um, here, at least to to Nashville. You know, getting to to dealers and everything like that might take a little bit more time, and then to to the customers. Um, but overall, we are uh, anticipating that 30 to 45 day range generally. Great, and we've been taking orders for some time at Steve Weiss Music. If you're interested in getting a Pearl Mallet Station, I'm not sure why you wouldn't be, uh, it's www.steveweissmusic.com. 
when we end this particular video feed. There will be a link there that you can use to go to the website uh, and pre-order them so that when they're ready, uh, they, can, they can get right to you and you can get right to using them in whatever application you may have. Matt, is there anything else we haven't covered you want to make sure that we cover before we let everybody go here? Uh, no, I think we covered uh, everything uh, very well. So again, one of the things we're really excited about this is just the, the varied potential of what people can do with this. I mean, already we've been blown away by the people reaching out to us, uh, you know, sending us videos and sending us links of the cool creative things they're doing uh, and then s them saying how excited they are to have the additional uh, features of like the faders and the pedals and the gap caps um, and the adjustable range to be able to kind of do their own thing with it. Um, so you'll see them this summer uh, on the road with some drum cores. Uh, Phantom Regiment already has one of the prototype units, and uh, I know they've been loving that so far. Um, Spirit of Atlanta, uh, which I, I write for, will we'll be getting ours relatively shortly. Um, and then some other drum cores that, uh, that uh, you know, you'll, you'll see this summer will have them as well. So we're really excited to see what, what people do with this. Uh, again, all the way from the beginner, you know, if you can be an eighth grader, get this instrument, plug it into your iPad, and it just work, all the way up to a professional level player, Broadway player, um, on that end. So it's, we're really excited to see once people get this in their hands, what they really do with it. So there you go, folks, the Pearl Mallet Station. Again, a crazy great device with some outstanding innovation. Like Matt said, no matter where you're playing, a concert hall, a uh, gymnasium for indoor, out in a stadium, or you're playing uh, your local watering hole or things like that, whatever part of the percussion world you're a part of, Mallet Station is certainly going to make a great impact. I can't thank the folks at Pearl enough especially for Matt Jordan coming on and being the expert that he is at this and giving us all the details. So thank you, Matt. Absolutely. Happy to help. And thanks, folks out there in Facebook land for tuning in. And remember, you can grab your Pearl Mallet station at Steve Weiss Music, www.steveweissmusic.com. Thank you.